Sahasian, and this is Bass Bebop Jazz Blues. I've done a few videos already, which I'll list above, covering some of the approach tones and things you can use to make your bebop lines. But at this point, you need to practice with a tune. There are thousands of jazz standards to choose from, but I think the best place to start is with the jazz blues. Right now, I'd like to take a look at the jazz blues as opposed to to the standard blues, the 145 blues. And you'll notice the first four measures are pretty much the same in both blues progressions. Measure five, six, seven, and eight, you have your four chord going to your one chord. However, on the eighth measure, we have what is called a secondary dominant. The secondary dominant is a two five, which approaches and resolves to the two chord over here, the C minor seven. C minor 7, we're in the key of B flat, would be the 2 chord. Next, we have the 5 7 chord. From there, we have the last four measures, which we call a turnaround. This turnaround is a 1 6 2 5 progression. This turnaround can be played with many different variations of chord changes. However, since you, the bass player, if you're walking, are responsible to lay down a foundation. So the guitar player and the piano player can play any number of variations and it will all work if you have a solid bass line. about what I just did in that jazz blues progression. First of all, let's talk about what key to play your jazz blues progression in. Most of the jazz blues materials, songs, compositions, and I see at jam sessions and on jazz gigs are in two keys. They're either in B flat or F. That's why I did this specifically in the key of B flat. Jazz, blues, and B flat. I'd like to do another video on jazz, blues, and F. If you know those two keys for jazz blues, you're in good shape if you go to a jam session or you get a jazz gig or even a great way to practice because you're going to practice something that is very useful and that's always important. I'd like to run down what I did in that walking bass line. So we'll take it the first four measures, one measure at a time. That was a B flat seven arpeggio. Second measure, E flat 7 arpeggio, same thing. One, three, five, flat 7. Third measure, we go back to the B flat 7, but we do something different here because we don't want to be playing that same shape over and over and boring everybody. That was a B flat 7th arpeggio. And on the last note, I put a passing tone going to the E flat, which gave it a nice 
nice jazzy tone. So two things about that. I start the arpeggio from the upper octave, and when I'm descending, the last note has an approach note going to the E flat. Measures five through seven. On measure five and six, I play an E flat seven arpeggio ascending and descending. Next we go to measure seven, which just goes back to the one chord. Now we go to the seventh chord and we play one measure of an ascending B flat seventh chord. On measure eight is where it gets interesting. We're going to play a D minor seventh to a G seventh, which is technically a secondary dominant approaching the two minor chord. Another thing about it, it is only one measure long with two chords, so we are playing two beats for each chord, so I have to choose the notes carefully. And what I did was I played a root minor third on the D minor chord, and then I played a root to a third below the octave on the G seventh chord. Sounds like this. Now there's no jazz notes in there, it's just an arpeggio, but since I made wise choices with the notes, and I made it ascend and descend in one measure. Makes it interesting. Right now, I'd like to talk about the two beat, also called the half note feel. This is often used on the beginning of the jazz standard on the first chorus where the melody is played, and then it goes into a full walking. For the most part, it's root on the first beat and fifth on the third beat. However, it can get more interesting than that, and I'll show you some ways you can do that. I'd like to talk about my approach to playing a two beat feel on this jazz blues progression. So on the first three measures, I just play root and fifth. B flat 7th, E flat 7th, back to E flat 7th. Okay, in the fourth measure, what I did was I played the flat 7 on beat 1, which is kind of uh, risky because you are expected to play a root. If you use it with a little taste, it can be very acceptable. I played a flat 7 on the 1, and then I played a D on the 3. Now the D is only a half step away from the upcoming four chord E flat. So it sounds kind of nice. Let me play the whole four measures for you. We're working on measures five through eight. We have the four chord played twice. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm playing a root and fifth the first time, and the second measure I'm playing a root and third. It makes it sound like a two-bar phrase instead of a one-bar phrase repeated twice, which is a good thing. Back to the one chord, which is a B flat seven. I'm going to use a root fifth again. And on to the two five, D minus seven to G seven, I play a root on both of those. I'll play the whole four measures and see how it sounds. On the last four measures, we have a C minor seventh to an F seventh. Then we have the one, six, two, five on B flat seven, G seven, C minor seventh, and F seventh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a one, three on the C minor. I'm going to play a one, three on the F seventh but going down to the three, 
and then the one six two five all root. See what sounds all together. If you like this video, please subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified of all the videos yet to come. Like, comment, visit my Patreon page. You can download all the study materials I used in this video. Thanks for dropping by. I hope to see you again.